All right, everybody. Well, we have something special today. We have Alan here from Yankum Ropes. And he saw us on YouTube and thought he would uh, bring us some ropes. So we've got the ropes that he brought here and we are going to pull them out and kind of go over the different sizes and what they're for and what they're rated and all that stuff. So yeah, let's uh, let's pull out this big one. Yeah, that's a, this is the inch and a quarter. I'll, I'll tell you, I was really pumped when we found you on, on YouTube. We're just down the road, like we're like two hours away. So it was, I was like, oh sweet, Taryn, they're like, Let's let's hang out sometime. So thanks for thanks for me to come over and deliver it. So yeah. yeah, inch and a quarter. So this is good for your smaller yellow iron, yeah, like backhoes, um, you know, like scraper tractors, stuff like that. Little 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 implements um, or uh, service trucks. If you've got a heavy service bed on a diesel truck, this is this is a good one. Half inch uh, soft shackle for getting all that stuff hooked up. And then we've got. The one inch rope. So this is good for your diesel pickups, the big three, you know, the the yeah. Duramax, the Cummins, the Power Stroke. Yeah. That's your as long as it's not a service, just a standard, you know, off the lot, not too heavy. If you're if you're hauling a load of lumber and your other buddy that's got lumber that's look you know, go up to the bigger one. So it's just it, it's all about the vehicle doing the pulling. It's not about what's stuck. So so, so if you're pulling a train <laughs> if you're pulling a train, uh, you can pull it with this little rope if, as long as you're pulling with a truck. You yep. don't want to. You don't want to use this little rope with a case quad track or a big 9510 RT. You want to use a bigger rope, even bigger than this one. This one you could use a backhoe or a, a small tractor to pull with. But whatever you're pulling, the size doesn't matter. It's just what you're yeah. pulling with right and 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 we'll we'll bring that really big rope to you uh, soon it's just it's the holidays and everybody wants one for christmas so. but <laughs> so yeah we've got more coming we got more coming it's, it's gonna be fun and i i really want to invite you to come down to the factory to give you guys a whole tour and take you guys out to lunch and show you how we make this stuff because we we make the cordage we we take the tiny little fibers we twist the yarn we braid the core braid the jacket we splice it, that we do everything. This We manufacture these ropes in house. So this rope right here is the 5 8 This is good for your side-by-sides. Um, so if, you're, if your diesel pickup is stuck in the snow or something or other, you can use a side-by-side -side with this 5 8 and then pop your pickup out. So this, okay. this makes it really easy. So it, like I said, it's a lighter vehicle with momentum can pull something out that's much larger and heavier that's stuck. And that, that's the whole idea is that if you're, if you're on black ice or sheet ice, you, 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 you don't have very much traction. You can't pull very hard with this chain or you, and you never, like everybody knows, you don't yank chains. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you, unless you want to yank your bumper off. And you, exactly. Uh, well, cause you want to well, do that. And we get lots of questions like, well, why, like, why, why can you yank a kinetic rope and not a chain? Well, a chain, when you, it's static, there's no stretch in it. They get like two, you know, one to 2% stretch in a chain, yeah. a steel chain. And so when you hit the end of that, you get an immediate, I mean, within a split millisecond, right? A, a very, very high peak load. And so, you know, and that's what breaks components. Yeah. But with a kinetic rope, they stretch 30%. And so right as soon as you, you start stretching that rope, it starts slowing the other vehicle down and then transferring that energy to the stuck vehicle. So over a, a much longer period of time, you're applying the same amount of force, but over time, so you don't get that really high peak load, so it doesn't break components. That is so you can get a run, and then and then it transfers that load. So it's it's kind of a weird physics mentality. Yeah. It's a paradigm in off-road recovery because before, if you had a static device, you have to have something larger and heavier with more traction yeah. to get the stuck rig out. Well, then you're limited because if your biggest piece of equipment is stuck. What are you going to use, right? <laughs> Why don't you just go home, wait, through, wait for the ground to freeze. <laughs> right, and, and everybody knows not to yank chains, but yeah. when you're pulling on a chain and all of a sudden it's not working, then what's the temptation? To yank on pull the harder. chain. Pull harder. <laughs> Bounce on it, you know? Yeah. And if you can't pull harder because you're in greasy mud or black ice or sheet ice or whatever, you, you, you just you can't put any more force into it. So if you have little to no traction, you know, or a small device mm -hmm. for, for doing the extraction, kinetic energy then becomes your friend to then pull somebody out. But your peak loads drop, so you're not breaking components. Yeah. So, yeah. 
anyways, yeah, the, the, the physics aspect of what these are. So these are nylon double braid ropes. Um, and like I said, we make everything in house, US domestic material. Like this is, um, this is about as American uh, manufacturing is, as it possibly can be. And we're only two hours down the yeah. road. So. These are made right here in Idaho, just down in, where was it again? Burley. Burley. I keep wanting to say Buell, not it's, Buell. It's in it's Burley. Okay. If, you, if you sneeze, <laughs> you'll drive right past Burley and hit Buell. So yeah. So what did we did we say what these are rated for? I know it says on the tag. Yeah, yeah. The so weight, the weight ratings. So all the the five eighths is rated for up to it's a minimum breaking strength of fourteen thousand eight hundred pounds. Um, and our largest rope. So this isn't the smallest rope. We have one size smaller. Okay. And then our largest rope goes up to two hundred and one thousand pounds. Oh. So you can pull anything you can think of at that point. Um, the the. The other thing too is that we pull, we post the minimum breaking strength on these on these ropes based uh -huh. on breaking a bunch of ropes. We do a standard deviation of sigma two. We make sure that we you know that we're doing everything by Cordage Institute standards for testing, making sure that everything's you know by the book. There, there are some foreign companies out there that will that will uh, publish a maximum breaking strength. Uh -huh. So they'll break a bunch of ropes and then they'll find the one that was a little bit better than the rest <laughs> of them. And then that, then those are the numbers that they'll they'll publish. What we do is we want to make sure that, you know, you know that our based on our testing that that minimum breaking strength is dead on the money. Okay. So you, you, so you could potentially pull more than that, but you've broken them at that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That that's where they break, and so um, the the classifications of the vehicles that you want to use these with are based on you know working load limit and and what that rate of bounce is and so there's there's a lot that goes into the physics of this that it's been thought over over and over and over again and so anyways we're excited to work with you hang out sometime and we'll get something unstuck or something stuck so. Heck yeah <laughs> we uh we definitely get a lot of stuff stuck here on the farm if you've been watching the channel for very long uh we've stuck everything from a little truck actually we pulled out christopher's four-wheeler his four-wheeler got buried all the way to the axles Oh, and man. we got everything stuck clear up to a there was a dueled up the dairy has a dueled up tractor that pulls a slurry tank full of manure water and he got stuck buried it clear to the frame and we pulled him out and we snapped multiple chains and trying to pull him out we got him out we ripped the front weights off that tractor so that was that's not, scary not ideal <laughs> no, we were all standing way back because we were afraid of a, a chain link come flying off at somebody but yeah, if we would have had one of these ropes, the bigger one, because we were using our huge uh, 9510 tractor pulling it. So if we would have had the big rope, probably wouldn't have had any problems. It probably would have just come right out. Probably wouldn't have broken anything. Well, here's what's cool is that now when something's stuck, you don't have to think of, shoot, what's the biggest thing we have to go pull it out? Now you can think, okay, well, what's, what's the biggest rope we have and what is it used for? And so you can now start looking at smaller pieces of equipment as um, recovery vehicles that before weren't an option for you. Yeah. And so now you're now your side by side can get your service truck unstuck. Yeah. When before you were going to bring your backhoe out to get that. Now your side by side can respond and give it a try. Not it's not a guarantee that it's <laughs> gonna get it out. Like if you're buried to the mirrors then it probably won't do it. Yeah. But it'll it it'll certainly try. So Yeah. We we have uh in the spring in a few months we'll be hauling manure and guaranteed Every single spring we haul manure, we at least get about 10 trucks stuck out in the field in the mud. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try, we usually take the big tractor out there and pull them out, but uh, we're gonna try just taking, probably not the service truck, we have another white truck. We're gonna try taking just a truck out there with this rope and seeing if we can uh, pull out a stuck manure truck this spring. So. We, got, we have a couple other things too that I wanted to show you and I'm excited about. So this is the receiver tow point. And so, because with these ropes, you never want to use a tow ball, especially like drop hitches. Um, you That's can pick, lighter than I was expecting. Yeah, it's made out of 6061 aluminum. Um, it's machined just right down the road from us. It's also, like, everything here except for the hard shackles are made in the USA. These hard shackles are they're produced in Holland. They're green pin hard shackles. You'll see these a lot in overhead yeah. lifting um, and like the oil and gas industry and stuff like that. They've just been really good to us. So we like working with these guys. Um, everything else, we 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 sew our own bags. Everything. This is this is all made in in Idaho. So 
This is to replace your tow, your tow ball. Don't use a tow ball with these kinetic ropes. Put this directly into your receiver and then you can have at it. So, um, and the soft shackles are designed to hook up anywhere you need to. And um, they, the one thing I love about soft shackles is if you're ever out in the water or the mud or the manure or the snow and you drop this, where does it go? All the way, <laughs> All to, the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. <laughs> you drop one of these, it's a lot lighter, yeah. so it's going to stay I mean, on that top. weighs like maybe a pound if you're lucky. Uh -huh. And that's the equivalent of one of these guys. So yeah. it's, it's wild how strong those things are. They're light. They're easy to use. You can put them in a lot more places, as long as it's a nice rounded uh -huh. surface. They, like. The, the, the issue with these is that they are susceptible to abrasion and sharp edges. So where that's why we wanted to supply you with these in case your recovery point is, you know, a 90 degree plazed edge, yeah. you know, then you can hook that up in, in that gotcha. spot. So anyways, but yeah, this is the starter kit. We'll, we'll be bringing a lot more to you and doing some more fun, fun stuff. Right. So. Well, we are excited to be working with Yankum. We, uh, we definitely have uses for all of these different ropes from, cause we have everything from little farm four wheelers to side by sides to pickups to backhoes to 10 wheeler trucks to we have a semi now and we have all various sizes of tractors as well and we also go pull out a ton of cars in the snow we pulled out probably 10 cars last year so we always have a use for some good strong ropes and as of yet we have just been using chains so this will definitely be an upgrade and we're excited to work with Yankum uh, I don't know that we have a code yet Okay, you, so you will. We when, will have a code. It'll for, be right here. It'll at the be bottom of the. It'll be right here. Pinned comments. It'll and be we'll, pinned yeah, we'll, we'll pin a comment with a discount code where you guys can go get a discount on your own Yankin ropes. Uh, we're probably going to do something here with Alan in a minute. And, uh, but yeah, thanks for bringing these ropes out. It's awesome. Yeah. We're, we're excited to go. We're going to go do a, a tour of their plant probably in January or so, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, keep watching so you don't miss that. And we'll see you in a minute when we go out to the cellar with Alan here. Perfect. <laughs> All right, well, we're, uh, we're just letting him pick off the front of the pile because he was gracious enough to drive all the way out here to bring us some ropes. It doesn't get any fresher than this, so I really appreciate it. Thank you very These much. Are the freshest potatoes you're going to find right now. Exactly. I know what I'm counting for like the next month. <laughs> so thank you very much. And, oh, they're, awesome. and they're not little potatoes either. They're, no, no, there's some big ones. They're big ones. That's, that's awesome. Well, I see a lot of this. Because we, we've got potato processing out in Rupert, so yeah. I, I, you know, did a little bits on some of the lines, and it's, it's pretty fun to watch how those, how those get sorted, too. It's, yeah. Have you seen those, those air sorters? Uh, yeah, we, we almost demoed one this year, but they, I can't remember what happened. It, it was somewhere else, and they couldn't get it to us. That's a potato right there. And I know you've got bigger ones in this pile. <laughs> Yeah, there are there are some definitely some monsters here. Yeah, that's that's what what you call what the family potato, right? It's, yeah, yeah. We um, had we had one this year that was almost five pounds. We had a contest amongst all the the kids that were working in spot harvest. Uh -huh. And there was one potato that was almost five pounds, and then there was one the longest one they found was twelve and a half inches. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. That's awesome. That one was almost as big as a paper towel roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There was, there was the one was the 12 and a half inch was longer than a roll of paper towels in the four in the four and a half pound one was white was bigger around than a paper towel roll. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> well, and these, these potatoes, I mean, that's, that's why they call them world, you know, world famous Idaho potatoes. They just, they just have an excellent flavor. Yeah. They're really, really good. They taste really good. I mean, if you've gone to a restaurant and eaten a baked potato, odds are that was a, like a Norcota or a Burbank that was grown in Idaho. So can I ask, is this a Yukon Gold or which, which these, ones are these? These are Russet Rangers. Awesome. So they're very similar to the Burbank yeah. in taste. So yep. they taste really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Do you want to have me that other bag? I'll take one over to Jade. I'll be fine. Get you a couple bags of taters here. I remember as a kid, like, we ate a lot of potatoes, and I, I remember getting sick of them. And now it's like, and then when we, when I met my wife up uh, over in Oregon, it was just, it was just constantly craving them. That's so, yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna keep filling up this sack of potatoes again. Thanks, Yankum Ropes, for coming out and. Uh,
sponsoring the channel, bringing us some ropes. Whatever we're, I can do to get some potatoes. We're, so. we're excited to work with you. And uh, make sure you guys go down below, hit that subscribe button. And I love you.